Do you have a mic on? Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Say hello to the black face of white supremacy. I'm only going to be up here for a few minutes, and I want to turn it over to a close friend of mine, uh, an associate. I hope you'll give him some of, your, some of your time. I ran for president because even though I ran as a mega guy, we got a mega guy, 45 running. There's some things that even he has not been talking about. Most notably, the number one domestic problem facing America is the epidemic of fatherlessness, by far. 70% of black kids today enter the world without a father in the home, married to the mother, up from 25% back in 1965. In fact, 25% of white kids now enter the world without a father in the home, married to the mother. 40% of all American kids do. And the numbers are clear. If you're raised without a father in the home, you're five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. What's happened? In the mid-60s, a Democrat named Lyndon Johnson launched what he called the War on Poverty. And since then, we have incentivized women to marry the government and incentivized men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And nobody, but nobody's talking about it. During the 2008 campaign for president, Barack Obama mentioned those stats. And Jesse Jackson accused him of talking down to black people. And that pretty much ended the discussion. So if you're white and you mention this, you'll be accused of engaging in systemic racism. If you're black and you mention it, you'll be called an Uncle Tom or the black face of white supremacy. So nobody but nobody's talking about this. These kids all need father figures. They all need mentors. Whether it's a father, a grandfather, a pastor, a coach, a teacher, somebody. And I'm urging people in my generation, I'm a baby boomer, I'll be 70, Two in April. I know you're going to say I don't look like it. Black don't crack. The elder the berry, the sweeter the juice. These kids need mentors. I'm urging people in my generation to step up. If money or hands, there are programs all around this country, most of them run by churches. I belong to the Calvary Church of Chino Hills. Pastor Jack Hibbs and my pastor. They have a program where they go door to door offering mentorships to these kids. I'm urging people in my generation to step up and be counted. These kids need mentors. Government can't solve the problem because government created the problem. Only we can solve the problem. Thank you. The other reason that I ran Every so often we have this crisis, this debt crisis, and spending crisis. One side looks at the other, I dare you to shut down the government, I dare you to shut down the government. The government doesn't get shut down because when you do, you get politically hurt. No matter who's in office, whether it's a Republican like Ronald Reagan or a Republican like Donald Trump, as much respect as I have for both of those gentlemen, government got bigger when they left. No matter who gets office, it gets bigger and bigger, largely because much of the spending is a so-called entitlement program. Even Bill Clinton and Barack Obama said that they were unsustainable, but nothing gets done. Why? Because the first order of most politicians is to get elected. The second order is to get reelected. You don't get elected by taking things away from people. The only way to rein in spending, the only way to get spending down to the level the founding fathers intended is for an amendment to the Constitution that fixes spending to a certain percentage of the GDP. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Now, an amendment sounds like a heavy lift, but ever since the Constitution has been ratified, it's been amended on an average of every 10 years. Once you make the case and tell young people these programs are not going to be there for you until and unless there are major changes made and reductions in spending, you make the case, the American people will get it, and something can happen. But only then will something happen. So I'm urging, if I had become president, as you know, I had some issues with the RNC, didn't make the first debate stage. But I'm urging Donald Trump will be our next president. <clears throat> <laughs> to push for an amendment to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP. 
Now, that's national debt. There's also personal debt. Joe Biden illegally tried to forgive student debt, even if he could do it, and he can't. That has nothing to do with private sector student debt. A lot of people are saddled with private sector student debt, and believe it or not, there is something that can be done about that. And that's why I wanted to spend a few minutes with my friend, Why Refi, the company that I'm involved in, the gentleman's name Lane Schoenberger. Lane, take it away. Thank you, Larry. My name is Lane Schoenberger. I'm the Chief Investment Officer and Founding Member of Why Refi, and I'm, I'm going to take you back in time just for a quick second. 2008, student loan debt total was $685 billion. Today it's nearly $1.8 trillion. Now you have been here for a couple, three days, and you've listened to speaker after speaker talk about how bad our debt crisis is. Well, Why Refi has come up with a way to help fix this problem for borrowers. Now we do not do any federal student loans. Why? Well, the federal government just, they're too blindsided to understand how this works. So we work with strictly private student loans that are in distress. And we have figured out a way to help these borrowers actually get out of debt, pay off their debt with dignity. And it's amazing when you give these folks a second chance and an opportunity to pay that debt off, they will actually take it. So what we've done is we've developed a product, and we've actually developed a few products. I'll share them both with you. The first one is we work with individual borrowers. They contact us. You saw an endorsement from Dave Ramsey in our, our commercial. And in that, uh, borrowers are reaching out to us. We explain our program. We put them through underwriting, kind of like getting a mortgage. Okay, these people do have a problem. We have them escrow payments with us to prove to us that they have the willingness and ability to pay us back. 70% of these folks come with a co-borrower. And let me tell you folks, some of the stories that I have heard are unreal. Okay, you heard Amanda up there. You probably saved my life. These are not uncommon stories. These things are tearing families apart. So, long story short, borrower gets through our program. They get approved. We uh, ultimately settle their debt and pay it off at a deep discount allow them to refinance with Y-Refi at a low fixed interest rate, custom term, built around their ability to pay. I just got word this morning that our default rate is actually lower than what we thought. We've been saying it's less than 2%. It's actually lower than that, which is phenomenal. It's fun to watch our borrowers win. So it is working. It's been very successful. Right. Now, the question then becomes, well, what can you do to help out? Because I will tell you this, Y-Refi was built on a few things. One, capitalism, innovation, entrepreneurship. So what can you do to help out? Well, we do not want to take institutional capital. We are not interested in institutional capital. In fact, we've turned down over 30 offers for funding from institutions. We're not interested. The reason we're not interested is we'd rather do it this way. What this is is an opportunity for accredited investors to invest $50,000 minimum. You pick the duration of your investment from one to five years. This is the fixed interest rate in a secured collateralized portfolio. Larry himself invests, as he said. What you do then is you have the opportunity to take interest income on a monthly basis. We calculate the interest on a daily basis, by the way. We make monthly payments of interest only, and at the end of your elected term, you get your money back. It's kind of like a bond. They're not bonds or promissory notes. I have to disclose that, okay? If you need your money back, you've heard Larry and you've heard, uh, we take our, we, by the way, we take our endorsements very seriously, as they do as well. Larry and Charlie and all of them, they take their endorsements very seriously, as, as do we. So I share that with you because when they say you can get your money out and there's no attack on principle, what they're saying is there's no attack on principle, okay? If you want your money back, we will actually give you credit for the amount of time that you've been invested based on the percentage of time. So for example, if you're in the five-year note, you're in for two and a half years, that's 50%. If you need out early, you get 50% of the interest, but you get all of your principal. That's pretty cool. Okay, then we went one step further, thank you. We went one step further and we said, you know what, let's give this investor the ability to turn that interest income on or off, up or down, in 1% increments or by dollar amount in each term that you're invested in as often as monthly. So you've got complete and total control over your investment. It's very flexible. Uh, last thing is we have a roll up. So if you're in the one, two, three, or four uh, term, if you wanna roll up to something longer at the end of your term, you're welcome to do that too. We're right here in Phoenix, and, and you've probably heard that on the radio if you're local. We encourage you, please come by the office, visit with us, meet the team, let us pull back the curtain. We love to have people come into the office, so please take the time to do that. And again, we're grateful for Charlie, for Larry, for this entire event. This has been a lot of fun for us, and we've had a great time. 
please come by the sponsor hall, visit the booth. I've got a whole team of my, my folks out there that are happy to answer questions, dig in a little bit deeper about how we do what we do. With that being said, I thank you very much for your time. Larry, thank you. Thank you for your friendship. We appreciate you. Thank you.